Welcome to this episode of the REBT Advocates. Uh, thanks for joining us. And um, I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein. I'm a clinical psychologist with a in-person and Zoom, Skype, and phone practice. My website is 3minutetherapy.com, three is spelled out. And I'm he here with Rohit Bilal, and uh, Rohit is an expert in REBT, and he's been filling in for Tommy uh, for the time being. So thanks for joining us, Rohit. Okay, yes. Rohit, uh, what subject would you like to discuss on this episode? Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, I'd like to discuss the topic of complaining. So. I find in myself that I have this bad habit of complaining. Now, it doesn't come from inappropriate negative emotions. It comes from appropriate negative emotions like displeasure or annoyance. But something tells me that it's not a good habit to have. So my question is, what is the REBT perspective regarding complaining? Okay, um, well, I want to com comment on what you said first, and then uh, we'll go into the REBT view. And uh, you first you said, I have a bad habit of complaining. Now, yes. uh, complaining could be a good habit or a bad habit. Um, because uh, the dictionary definition of complaining is the expression of dissatisfaction or annoyance about something. For example, I complained about the food. Now, if, you'd, if you're annoyed about something or dissatisfied and you'd like it to change, then giving a complaint would make sense. In other words, saying wha what the problem is. So that actually makes sense. I would not call it a bad habit. I'd only call it a bad habit if it interferes with blocks or sabotages other goals. Now, if you're married, for example, and your wife says, I prefer you not complain, then I would say, and you want to comply with her uh, preference, then I would call it a bad habit. So I really think it depends on the context uh, to determine whether complaining uh, is a bad habit using this definition uh, from the dictionary that it's an expression of dissatisfaction about something. Does that make sense, Rohit? It does. And I'll just add, my reason why I think it's a bad habit is because I do it, I can find myself doing it incessantly sometimes in a particular situation with my co-workers where we get together and complain a lot about the management. And something tells me inside that that's not a good habit to have. Okay, well, if you decide that you don't want to complain, that's up to you. And then that would be another criteria for a bad habit. You're doing something that for whatever reason you decided not to do. So that makes sense. And yes. uh, another thing you mentioned was uh, the complaining comes from a particular feeling or emotion, but actually it comes from um, a thinking. Thinking that I prefer uh, things be different, that I prefer my coworker act differently, or I prefer the food be different if you're in a restaurant, et cetera. So, uh, so um, if it comes from uh, that kind of thinking, a preference, then it would not be coming from an emotion. And this, I'm glad you mentioned this, Rohit, because this is a common misunderstanding that our, our emotions come from our thinking and our behavior come from our, emo our emotions. But that's not the way emotions, behavior, and thinking works. Both our emotions and our behavior comes from our thinking. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, if I can ask a further question, do you not think it's possible our thinking can lead to feeling and our feelings can lead to an action? Uh, no, I don't think that our feelings, it depends on what you mean by lead, our feelings don't cause an action. For example, if someone's about to punch me and I feel uh, angry or fearful and 
I punch him first. That action came from my thought, I better defend myself, otherwise I might get hurt. So there's always, our actions always come from our thinking. Does that answer your question? That does, and um, that's something new that I've learned about REBT. You know, sometimes you think you know everything about something. I've learned something new today. Oh, good, good. Now, I did want to say something about REBT since you bring it up, and we may very well have new viewers. REBT stands for Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. It was the first cognitive behavior therapy devised by Albert Ellis in the 1950s. And so the subject of our YouTubes and podcasts, eventually, there'll be podcasts, we're hoping, um, is REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. And the basic idea in Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy is that our emotions come from our thinking and disturbed emotions come from a particular type of thinking, demands, must, should, supposed to, have tos. But if you want more details, you can look at past REBT Advocates podcasts or read books by Albert Ellis, the founder of this system, or uh, read some books by me. And uh, so that would be a way to fill yourself in. Okay, yeah. uh, did you want to say something else or shall I move on to, about complaining? I just I would like to say that one thing that I've noticed or so I've realized through my times practicing IBT is that we have behavioral consequences and emotional consequences. And obviously complaining is clearly a behavioral consequence. And we're interested in what sabotages our goals. So for myself, my goal is to get promoted in my job. And if I complain all the time, that isn't going to happen. Yes, I think that's an excellent summary. Summary. Thank you for that, Rohit. So uh, to move on, um, as we said, complaining comes from a preference. But then if you escalate your preference into a demand, um, rather than I prefer the food be hot, the food must be hot, or my coworker must not uh, talk to me while I'm in the middle of a call or something like that, you escalate the preference into a must, then the complaining becomes uh, toxic. And I'm not sure what we would call that. We could call that um, anger or over complaining or inappropriate complaining. Maybe we could uh, have rational complaining and irrational complaining and irrational complaining is when you have a must and normally there would be anger resentment or hostility accompany, accompanying it so you'd have that emotion plus you'd have the complaining uh so uh so that becomes an emotional problem because you make your preference which leads to complaining or appropriate complaining into uh inappropriate complaining, anger, resentment, hostility, those kinds of things. Rohit, did you have a comment about that before I go on? Yes, I wondered whether you thought it's possible that complaining can sometimes lay the groundwork for anger, because in my own experience, what I found is when I start complaining, these preferences do start becoming escalated into demands, like I prefer my boss not be annoying to my boss should not be annoying. Yes, that's right. I, I agree with that, that um, when you complain, then you can escalate it, an appropriate complaint or an appropriate preference, you can escalate it into a must or a should. And really, that's the way musts and shoulds and irrational demands work. They start as a preference and usually a passionate preference. And then all humans have a biological tendency or a predisposition, a proclivity to escalate their preferences into demands, into musts and shoulds. So that's really where demands come from. So if you have a complaint, a preference, then being human, it's easy to uh, turn that into a demand. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. It does. 
Okay, well, uh, I think we covered it in outline. Is there anything else you'd like to ask about that before we wrap it up? No, I think that's very clear, Michael. Okay, very good. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, note them below the video. And uh, if you, we're also entertaining volunteers. In other words, if you'd like to come on, discuss a problem, and we'll cure you. If, mm -hmm. Or if you'd, like to, if you'd like us to address the subject, please note it below and uh, we may get to that. Give us a like if you enjoyed the discussion. Please support us on Patreon and subscribe to the REBT Advocates to stay on the rational side of life. <laughs>